Today's message is entitled, The Manifested Love of God. All across the world, it's Christmas. There is a, there is a common greeting that is common across all across the world. And one of that is Christmas. Christmas, whatever the country, is a word that is, that is communicated throughout all the world, whether it may be believers or unbelievers, but people all across the world participate in this, on this holiday. It's a worldwide holiday whose birthday is widely celebrated like Christmas all across the world. There is no other birthday like that other than Jesus' birthday. And that's how much of a joyful day and a day that pleases God. And in some way, in some sense, unbelievers rejoice even more so on Christmas. Year, for all year long, there are people who only prepare for Christmas all year long. All year long. So nowadays people go to department stores and they decorate all the department stores. It's called VMD, where, or visual merchandising design, merchandise designers. And so they design all these merchandises so for Christmas. People who have that job are called VMDs. And their commission is related to how much the, the department makes at that time. And so they stake a lot during that, those times, all year long. I, w I visited Singapore, and Singapore doesn't even, is not even a Christian country. But the entire department stores was all decorated with Christmas trees. I had never seen something like that before. There were department stores and they had decorated it so grandly. You know, they don't even believe in Jesus, but why do they decorate all their department stores like this? They, they turned on, they have carols coming on, and not a lot of places turn on carols anymore because apparently you have to pay every time you play carols. But I asked them, why is it that Singapore has all these department stores that are all decorated and apparently the government they the department stores compete with each other and the government rewards the department store that does best during the holidays when people perfect these christmas decorations after preparing it for an entire year the next day apparently they go overseas and why do they go overseas so that they can think about how to decorate the next year's Christmas. And so they go to receive some inspiration and they look at how other countries decorated for Christmas and to be inspired by that, to find some inspiration. So apparently they travel overseas the very next day. But many people are inside this stream and they, you know, they put and stake everything, all their lives into Christmas and that kind of Christmas traditions. There are hot places during Christmas as well. And that's what people are interested in. So many department stores, they become, and malls become hot places. And in order to become those hot places, all of these department stores and malls, they stake everything to decorate it the most popular place where people all gather. That's what a hot place is. So they invest beyond their Im imagination for that. And that's why it's even hard to get a reservation when it comes to these places. So those are popular places that people, everyone loves. But they have completely forgotten the essence of Christmas. It's been a while, a very long time, since the essence of Christmas has completely disappeared. People don't know that. 
Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is a spiritual truth. People don't know that. Jesus as the Christ to solve all problems. He came to this earth. They don't know that fundamental reason for Christmas. And it's a Christmas that needs to be spent as a day to reveal this truth. But everyone is completely swept away by the in introduction, by the visible things due to Satan's strategies. And with that, the essence of Christmas has completely been covered. And because we're inside this reality, for us to be in this place right now, that in itself is the most beautiful field in the eyes of God. It is the field that pleases God's heart. It's a very unique field that we're in right now. God's greatest interest is upon us who holds on to the covenant. Today's passage tells us once again and allows us to think about the true meaning of Christmas. The great love of God that is within Christmas and the fruits of that love and how that love has been manifested in our lives. Like today's message, Christmas is a day it was a day in which God's greatest love was manifested, was revealed. He showed us the evidence of how much He loves us. Through today's passage, may you all, yea, one believers, realistically experience God's great love, enjoy it, and relay it, and be the forerunners of Christmas. The number one, the love of God that saved us. Let's look at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God, because God is love. Amen. Today's passage tells us the fundamental reason for why Christmas exists. The reason for Christmas is because God is love. Through the incident of chapter 3, we were separate from God and we were amidst sin and curses and we were enslaved to Satan and we were doomed to eternal, endless destruction. That was our fate and destiny. But God did not leave humans to be that way. And He opened the way of restoration. He opened the way for us to be restored. How will you explain the reason for that? God opened the way for salvation, but how will you open? How will you explain that way? There is no other way. But to say that because God is love, and therefore that love of God, the day that His love was manifested, is today, Christmas Day. Let's go to verse nine. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. Amen. To save us so that we might live through Him. We who are once dead, we who are once spiritually dead, in order to save us, He did not. He sent His one and only Son, and His love was manifested upon us. That's what Apostle, Pond, Apostle John reveals to us. And the reason He did that is because he desires to save us. John 3.16 The easiest verse and the most, the most well-known verse, John 3.16 emphasizes this. Let's all say it in one, one voice. For God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. For God so loved me. Austin said this. 
even if I were the only human to live on this earth, He would have still sent His one and only Son and had Him die for me, to save me, because He loves me. Do you feel God's love? All saved Yewon believers? You should think about, why does God love me so much? Why does God love me? Why is it that God so one-sidedly loves me? Oh, I, people might be jealous of me. That's how much you should be feeling God's love to the point where you think about those things. Oh, God will, if you think that, oh, God hates me, then according to your faith, Satan might, will work upon that. But if you say, God loves me, then according to your faith, the Holy Spirit work, will work upon you. That's how much God loves you, so that you may not perish, but receive eternal life. So what is the greatest expression of God's love? It is His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, coming to this earth. Through the incident of Genesis chapter 3, man who had sinned could not come out of this sin and curses. Because a, a sinner cannot solve their own sin. No matter how much they try, all, religion, all religions try their best not to sin, not to commit any sins. They try to become these virtuous individuals so that they, and, and so they leave their families behind and they go and try to practice a good life and they keep practicing that religious practices. And they practice over, over and over again, wearing the same clothes each day without having anything. And w there was a Buddhist monk that practiced that each day and day. And he said, as he passed away, he said that the moment his, he took his last breath, he said, I am being thrown into a fiery prince of hell. That's what religion is. They try their best and they practice over and over again. They try their best and give their best and they open their eyes and they see that they're in hell. Because we're, we have spirit and because the only human beings are spiritual beings and we have a soul in us, spiritual beings don't die. Even when you commit suicide, it, that's not the end of it because there is an afterlife. The physical flesh, the body goes back to the ground, but we have spirit. We go back to hell or heaven. All religion try their best to and give their and put an effort to solve their own sin problems. However, it cannot be solved and therefore the Savior to save humanity cannot be a sinner. And therefore, because he, because in order to save humanity, and because a sinner cannot save himself from their sins, he had to be 100% sinless. For all have sinned, all human beings are sinners, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a pope, all human beings are sinners, but it's only Jesus Christ who came as human, but who did not have any sin. We must have no sin. The, the Savior had to have no sin. And therefore, He had to be an offspring of a woman, not an offspring of a man. And for that reason, Jesus Christ was sent to us. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and He was born of a virgin. Mary, of a virgin. And through that, Jesus came as 100% human and 100% God. That was the that was the complete and perfect condition of a savior that could save humanity from sins. And it was only Jesus Christ who could meet those conditions. No religious leader and no other religion has salvation. They may say, "Oh, Christianity is too self-righteous." They say that only that is the way for salvation, but it's true because it is only through Jesus Christ that we receive salvation. Jesus Christ came as a prophet 
to, the, for, to be the way to meet God. And as the priest, he saw completely and perfectly solved all the problems of sin. And as the king, he completely defeated and overcame the force of Satan and darkness. And that very love of God that was manifested upon us, that day was Christmas Day. But this has become an age where it is impossible to see the spiritual truth. There's a saying. that the day that Satan rejoices the most is Christmas Day. Because when you look at it spiritually, it should have been the day that Satan should have been mourning and grieving. That should have been Christmas Day. Why? Because what is the reason Jesus Christ came to this earth? It was so that he may destroy the works of the devil to destroy and crush the head of, the sa of Satan. And therefore, the devil should have been grieving and mourning because of that. Jesus Christ fulfilled that commission. But until the day the Lord returns, there will be a time for Satan to be active as the prince of the air, as the, the one who sees control of all the powers and authorities. Satan still works on this earth until the day the Lord returns. However, unfortunately, this age does not reveal this great love of God, but it pleases, but instead it is pleasing the devil. And it has become a day where Jesus Christ, the main figure of Christmas, has completely become isolated. There is no name of Christ anymore. They say, oh, don't talk about Jesus Christ. We don't want to hear that. It's no longer Christmas, but it's holiday. and it, It's just a holiday. It's not, it's not the day of Christ. We don't want to hear the word Christmas anymore. It started with America. They completely got rid of that. America that used to do world missions now com completely discarded that. And it also disappeared in Europe as well. They say, oh, is it still Christ? No, what a fool you are. How naive you are, they say. It's become a world that criticizes us that way. They're not interested in Christ. All they're interested in is Santa Claus and other carols. Even in the introduction. And it, Christmas has become a day of commercialization. And because of that, Satan is rejoicing because everything's going as he planned. In other words, it's a lost Christmas. It's a lost Christmas. In this age, we are living in this age. We have to come back to our senses. Then we must restore the essence of this lost Christmas. We have to get rid of all the weeds and the seeds that Satan has spread. Because Satan continues to try to dim the meaning of Christmas, we must continuously go into the uniqueness of Christ, only Christ, only Jesus, only the kingdom of God, only the filling of the Holy Spirit. It's not just Christ, only Christ. As time goes on, the great spiritual mystery, the height, the depth, and the width of that's inside Christ is something that we will experience. And But to do that, you must have a sure and certain I spiritual identity because uh, if you don't, Satan is completely making a joke of other people. If you're not spiritually awake, you'll only become a joke, a play thing for Satan. And you'll just run errands for the devil. May the manifested love of God, that is Jesus Christ, be experienced in your life. And may you be overfilled with 24-hour gratitude on this Christmas Day. Number two, the rightful love of oneness. First John 4, 10 says, And this is love, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another.
the great love of God that has sent His one and only Son as a sacrifice for us, we who have received that love, what kind of life should we live? The passage reveals this to us. Just as God has loved us, it is rightful for us to love also. As saved children of God, if we're condemning others and hating others and being envious of others, that's not a reflection of a child of God. How can someone who's received God's love hate someone else? Just because they, you, you don't like them? Are you God? Just because they've caused some type of loss to you or because they've touched your ego? Because of that, you, you hate someone for decades? It's someone, someone like that. It's someone who's not experienced God's love. One who's experienced the love of cr the cross of Christ, then that person is bound to become a peacemaker that unites with the love of God. Oh, they realize when someone is, if they realize Satan's deception that works through other people, and they pray that they may be able to unite and bring people together through the Holy Spirit. And you must realistically feel the unity that the Holy Spirit has brought, brought upon us. In my life, I've never really competed with someone else or I've never really had some type of a, a bad conflict with someone else because I don't like that. So I would resolve things immediately. Wherever I went, I would just unite everything. And if there are any obstacles that hinder us from becoming one, then I would resolve those things. And I put in all effort to be united, to become one. And I believe that all our departments will become united and one. And so if we had not become one, how would it have been possible for us to give offering for our construction during the pandemic? But because we have become one with God's love, it was possible. And it's the same for your family, for the, your workplace, for the businesses that you may run. What's the most important thing is for all of you to become oneness. May all the departments, all committees become one. It's the most important thing to become one. In Christ Jesus, we are one body. You have to be have that mindset that you're one body in Christ. Your 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 arms, legs, you're one body in Christ. And we are fulfilling God's kingdom together. We all have different talents, we have different circumstances, different personalities, cultures, and characters. We're all different. Feet and hands are different. We're, it's the same body, but they're different. But just because we're different, if you keep saying, oh, you're, it's different, then the feet will start to say, oh, you know, I'm always on the bottom and I'm always having to step on all these things. I, I want to become hands today. And let's say that the hand becomes feet and the feet become hands. If someone starts to shake your hand, do you think people would shake your hands when your hands have become your foot? You need to have that one body mindset. Everyone is different. Every Each individual is different. Some people may b always be in a rush, and but some people may be a little bit slower. They have to think about what they need to say. Everyone has different natures like that. And some people like to be alone, and some people like to always constantly speak. Why don't they? And some people don't speak. Why don't they speak? Because they just don't like to. Don't chastise them for not saying anything. Long ago, I met some friends and I talked. I talked to them for about three hours. And I and the other person didn't say a single word. And I said, "Why? Why didn't you say anything?" And he said, "Oh, I was worried that someone might think what someone might think about about me if I said something." Because of the incident of Genesis chapter 3, because man sinned against God, humans became enemies with God. But that relationship that was broken between God, was restored through the mediator, the unique and one and only mediator, Jesus Christ. And that's why he became the peace offering. And he allowed us to reconcile with God. On one hand, he held God's hand, and on one hand, he held 
the hands of human beings so that they might become one again and be reunited and reconciled. And that's why it is Jesus Christ who allows us to have that communication with God. The church is a place that was established by the blood of Christ and therefore, under any circumstances, we must always fulfill the oneness of love. It is rightful for us to love one another. We must not lose hold of this. It is rightful for us to love one another. God is love. Then we must become love as well. Amen. Our, our elder Kim and Elder Lee, whenever I meet them, they're so full of love. That should be what's rightful. That should be what's normal. Oh, that person overflows with love. There's this famous lecturer, Martin Lloyd Johnson. He said that I, I, I am not hesitant to say that one of the biggest issues in Christianity is the issue of not being able to love one another. How can you discern whether someone is a brother and a sister in Christ is through the love, whether we love one another. There's a, a touchstone. Is a a touchstone that or is something that de defines whether some and it tests the alloys of gold, and so it's something that's used to discern whether something a material is true gold or not. But nowadays, the word touchstone is used to become the criteria to test whether. Uh, to test certain standards. So for us to, the criteria to see whether we're saved or not is by going through the touchstone of whether we love one another, whether we embrace one another, forgive one another. That's what the child of God is. But if you con constantly criticize others, condemn others, and speak negatively of one another, that's not a child of God. That is the easy touchstone or method to discern whether someone is a child of God or not. The Apostle Paul clearly says this in verses 7 and 8, that those who love comes. It says that those who love know God, but those who do not know God cannot love. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love is perfected in us. Amen. His love is perfected in us. Through this Christmas day, if there are any conflicts between your family, between your spouse, between your friends or any colleagues, if there are any obstacles between your relationships, at this time, may you lay all those things down before the love of the cross of Jesus Christ. Don't give any reasons and excuses for the remaining time that we have in this year of 2023 may be spent as a time to restore relationships. You must become a gospel nature where you're okay, everyone's okay, and everything's okay. It is then that God uses you. If you can't do that, then God won't use you. I'm sorry to say that, but whoever you may be, God knows this, people know this, and even evil spirits know it, whether you have become, whether you possess a gospel nature. If you don't have a gospel nature, God cannot use you. God fulfills God's kingdom through meetings. But if you're, if you're unable to love one another and yet you're just completely criticizing and condemning others, then how could God use you? You must pray, God, may I become and possess a gospel nature before asking for anything else. And it's through that individual that they possess all nations. May you all be used in this one love of oneness in the name of the Lord. This is a conclusion. There is a dictionary publisher in America, and that's Miriam Webster. The, the times, 
they always give statistics of how many of which how many times people searched up certain words the the word that was the word that was searched the most this year was authentic authentic means genuine or real it means real authentic right now we live in an age where artificial intelligence has greatly developed but there's a problem because now through artificial intelligence they start to photoshop certain people and they photoshop it and that photoshop has been developed and it's creating false videos and pictures now and therefore we live in an age where we cannot discern what is the truth but the word authentic is con contrary to that now we live in an age where through artificial intelligence false and fake news are dispersed all across and very rapidly and therefore it is a time of crisis when it comes to what is true and authentic. It's difficult to discern what is true or fake. That's how much AI has developed. And so some AI co companies have gathered and, and had a meeting and they were discussing how much they should develop and advance artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence could go beyond human abilities and knowledge and so they came together to say let's limit this because it's dangerous that's the point that we're at right now artificial intelligence can defeat human knowledge and abilities and cognitive abilities and as it rapidly develops many information are becoming distorted and are being falsely spread it's not like it discerns what is true and not and then uploads it but it just rapidly uploads everything and that's why even spiritually why am i saying this to you because even spiritually now there will be many false information and news that will be rapidly and continuously uploaded onto the internet and many of these may, may be uploaded as if it is logical even when it comes to many heresies and they invest a lot into that so that when people search it up so that people they could be that you could hook people into it things that are not biblical they make it seem like it's something grand and classy and when people search things up it becomes one of the first searches for when people search things and that's what many heresies are doing right now the Jehovah's Witness and other cults and heresies and that's if you don't have spiritual discernment you will be attacked by that especially our remnants as we must be careful that they are not tainted by these false cultures of this world and we must firmly raise up the partisan of Jesus Christ it's not just about attending church or not but you must help that your children may discern truth well and therefore you must plant the firm parts of Jesus Christ in them and that's how they become remnants whom God takes responsibility for a remnant is one who God takes responsibility for we must guide them so that they may live lives as ones who leave behind an eternal masterpiece Galatians chapter 1 7 says not that there is another one but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you let him be accursed through the 
atonement and resurrection of Christ on the cross, if any and the uniqueness of Christ, if anything is if anything contrary to that is preached, then that is not the gospel. Other than the gospel of Christ, it is not a gospel. Do we pray in other people's, other religious leaders' names? They do that because they've received a false spirit, but it's different for you, right? You're all different. You know this. All Yeon believers, as we greet this Christmas Day, we must firmly hold on to the true and fundamental essence of Christmas. It's not just about let's go somewhere and have fun and let's go and eat something good. Let's go to a nice place. That's all good. You can go. But may you go holding on to the spiritual fundamental truth and essence. If you forget that and you lose hold of that and you just go and have fun, you're the same as other unbelievers. And through the incarnation of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ, that absolute love of Christ that was manifested through all that, may you be able to relay that and fulfill a oneness of the gospel and oneness of love with that love of Christ, with whoever you meet. This one person lives in Ichan, and he evangelized someone, and he evangelized someone, and he evangelized two people. And because they were unable to to, and because he had already family members, he couldn't have everyone get, uh, he couldn't give everyone a ride. So the two other people he evangelized had to come via by taking a bus. And so, he, uh, so she gave up her ride so that the people she evangelized to could take the, could come by comfortably through a car, and she took a bus herself, and it took her two hours. They're evangelists like that in our church. May you become alive that that lives to save other souls. May you have a passion for saving other lives. You may say, "Oh, I'm in difficulty. I have so much conflict right now. How can I?" care about others and think about the others. That's someone who's not received grace. That's someone who doesn't care about Christmas. Christ came to this earth as a human to save us. Should you be spending this day with any other thought? May at least all our Yewon believers know the meaning of Christmas and become those who spread the meaning of Christmas. Let's all pray. Father God, May all the believers of Yewon experience the manifest love of God and actualize it. May we feel that love and may we in love all our neighbors. And may we not have a single person that we dislike on earth. And may we go into oneness as we understand and embrace each other. And may we be those who spread Christmas as we expand the kingdom of God. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.